All right, everybody, I am going to show you today how I was able to take an analog potentiometer and get it working with my throttle quadrant for the CRJ700 from Aerosoft using Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And uh, for any of you that have struggled with configuring a, an aircraft that's running an analog uh, potentiometer for your throttle quadrant, you're gonna like this video because I'm gonna show you how to get the job done, at least with this, this uh, specific aircraft. Now, traditionally I did a um, older video that was published a couple of years ago where I showed you how I created, I used a, an Arduino Micro and I gave you the scripts to load onto it to convert it over to a joystick controller. And then what would happen is when you attach that to your computer, it would recognize it as a joystick and it would allow you to simply move the joystick up and down or the throttle quadrant and then through prepared, you could assign that to the axes and it worked. Now, the difference now is you don't have that functionality with FS2020 and the CRJ700. So we have to find an alternative workaround to accomplish uh, the same thing. And I had to, and, it, and I struggled with this. It prob I probably have 15 or 20 hours into just researching and working on this just to get this uh, throttle quadrant to work the way it's supposed to. I did get it to work where it moved up and down, but it was never... Uh, it was never uh, calibrated for each specific uh, spot on, on the throttle quadrant. And so I'm going to show you today how I was able to do that. So let's jump into it. First thing that um, we're going to be covering is setting up the initial analog connection. So inside your extras and settings, once you attach uh, Arduino Uno to it, you can start adding your different LEDs and buttons and so forth. Well, one of these is called Throttle 1. And what you're gonna notice is if you hit Add Device, well, you won't have Throttle 1 there, but if you hit Add Device and you do Analog Input, it's going to allow you to select which pins are on your, uh, on your board that's available. Now that's, so once you set up that analog, I'll show you here on this one, uh, Throttle 1, it's mapped to the pin number A2, and I have sensitivity just under 10 and I named it Throttle 1. Now, once you add that and you upload it to your board, you upload that configuration, hit OK, then what's gonna happen is that Throttle 1's gonna appear right here on the list, and this is in your input configurations. Now, when you come over here and you go in to edit it, you're gonna see right here that you have, you'll have to select Throttle 1 from the dropdown or scan for input and move the device back and forth. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, and you're going to be able to see it and recognize it and add it. Now, before I jump into what I did next, I, I'm going to show you something. When you move the throttle, there's throttle 2 and there's throttle 1. You're going to see the numbers jump from a low number, 132, all the way up to an 895 on that throttle. On this one, it's a little bit different. It goes to 912 all the way down to 164. So each one of those points... Is, is a location on that throttle that's going to move it from completely uh, in the idle position all the way to max throttle. Now, what you're going to do, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, is what we're going to do to be able to match that analog signal up to the aircraft is we are going to create a special file right here. And I want, I'm going to kind of pause on this. I was able to find this file online in a forum, which was a huge help. And, uh, and I'll show you how we implement it. So this is gonna be called crj.lua because it's a Lua script. And we're gonna do, open up our notepad and you're gonna copy this down line for line, right? Word for word, letter for letter, every period, everything. Just do a complete pause this video and replicate this. And then you are going to save this in your FSUIPC folder. And if you, you're, you'll have to have FSUIPC7 to do this, but you're going to save it there. And you'll see where I saved it, the CRJ Lua. Now, inside the script, what you have is you have, this is writing to an FSUIPC offset, and it already has the configuration for the standard throttle for the... Uh, for the distance and so forth. And you'll see that right here we have 67110 
and 67103. These are what are called event IDs. So once this file is saved, we're gonna come back over here and from, the, from here, you're gonna use FSUIPC event ID. So we are going to actually pull in the file uh, and look for this because this file here, let me bounce over and I'm, I apologize for bouncing around. This CRJ Lewis script, we're gonna have to tell, we're gonna have to tell um, um, uh, FSU IPC during boot up that for Flight Simulator 2020 to load that automatically. So you do that by going inside of here and opening up the FSU IP uh, 7 INI file. So we're just going to open that up and you're going to see right here I stuck this little statement in here. This isn't anything big, but you'll see I loaded in number one, CRJ. Now that CRJ matches the name right there, CRJ. You do not have to add the Lua to the end of it. You just put CRJ. What that means is when that software starts up, it's going to preload these files in, okay? So this, let me close that down. So this script is gonna get preloaded into the software. So we don't have to call the script when we're configuring this. All we have to do is specify the event ID and it's gonna look through what's preloaded and it's gonna find that event ID and it's gonna take the variable uh, from it, which is this at symbol. That means any, any production of data is being stored in that 67103 number. So right here, as I move this joystick, all of those numbers are being stored in that, in that variable or that offset ID. And in this case, we're gonna use um, 67103 or 103. So I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna open this up, 67103, and then I'm gonna tell it, give it an at symbol, okay? What that's gonna do now is that's going to send all that data to that offset, all right? And so now when I move this up and down, it's going to send that data to the offset. Now, what you're going to see here is that, and that offset's already uh, tied to, let me open this up. This is very important, super important. I almost missed it. Keep following me on this, guys. This is the, this is the LVAR or the variable that it's going to call. In this case, it's called throttle one axis set EX1. Now this one here is not a standard built into um, like Moby Flight deck when you're trying to select a uh, pre-built uh, control. So like if I came back to this, follow me, if I came back to this and I said, I don't want to do an event ID, I want to go to Microsoft Flight Simulator and I just want to pull up my throttle one. Well, that throttle one variable that's inside of here does not move the throttle that's inside the aircraft. So the so because of that, we're using an event ID and we're gonna use a custom built, well, it's not custom built. These are actually new. They were recently added to Flight Simulator 2020. And you'll see right here, there's all of these new throttle sets. See those? So these are all new variables that are not available in your simple drop-down selector, but you can still use them because the software updates every time you open it up. So right here, you can see these different sets. And so I use the one called Throttle One Axes Set EX1. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the data that's found in here and it's gonna set it to that variable. So that variable is gonna be reading that data. Now what that means is because that variable is built into Flight, si flight uh, Simulator 2020, um, it's going to appear in here. And then it's gonna function, it's gonna be pushing that data into that variable. And then as we move this, the analog is pushing the data in and you're seeing the shifter or the throttle move. Now you'll see there's a problem with this. It's not going all the way down. So now we have to calibrate it. And the way we calibrate it is, let me just uh, go back over here. Let me go shift. I, I'm still getting used to this, holding a phone and doing this. But I'm gonna turn up here. Sorry guys, follow me on this. You're gonna see there's some built-in controls 
that are available within the aircraft. And I'll just zoom in to do this. You can break this page out if you want, but you go over to options, you go to next page, you go to calibrate throttle, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in on this and then I'm gonna move this throttle. See that throttle moving right there? And it allows you to set each one of your points. So your idle, your climb, each one of those, you can set it, you can set the throttle specifically on that location and then hit the set button and it'll read in, it'll assign um, that position to that number. Now what, now even though it's assigned, you can see right here, because I preset it, uh, the max power is assigned to 892, 663, 526. And to assign it, it's pretty simple. If I pull, I'm going to pull the throttle all the way back. We're at 129, right? So at 129, I'm, I can hit set. And this, and then it'll set it to 129. See that? And then I'm going to move this up to, to uh, climb. So I'm going to set this to climb. And there's our climb. And then I'm going to move it to toga. And I'm going to set that one and then move it to max power and i'm going to set that one now even though you set these what's going to happen is as we're as we're you you remember here as this data is feeding through you'll see as we move that each one of these numbers came through here that corresponds with this and it's going to move that that throttle through these different um assignments now Here's where you notice ours didn't go all the way down, did it? So what we have to do is we come over, have to come over here and we have to add an adjustment because every time these are moving, it's incrementing a larger amount of numbers here. So we're going to reduce that down to 200, okay? Or 100. You could try whichever one on yours. And then you're going to hit OK. And then we're going to zoom out and, you, and we can save our settings there. And I'm just going to, okay, again, I'm going to set that, uh, I had to set my phone down to, to move that. But now you're going to watch the throttle, all right, because we, we made those adjustments. Now I'm going to pull it down and see how it goes all the way down. And as I move up to each spot, look at how nicely it moves to each one of the locations. So I have a perfect calibration of the throttle. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better than that. I mean, it's, it, it is dead on each spot. See that? Isn't that nice? And I move it right here. And you can see that I moved to climb. And I look right there and there's climb. See that? And I'll move right there and there's climb. And then I'm gonna move up right there. And you're gonna see it move up right there. And I'm gonna go max and there's your max. And we're on max right there. So with that being said, that's how you calibrate the, joy the throttle in the CRJ700 with Aerosoft, get it completely dialed in. I hope that makes sense. Again, I'll just show you a screenshot of this so you can write it down or copy it. And I hope this helps you save 15, 20, 30 hours trying to find a solution. But so far, uh, that worked perfect. And it actually works better than it ever did, even, even before when I had it set up on prepared. Um, what I love about this too, is I can get very detailed on where that throttle's at at all times. And uh, of course, I can do the same thing with the flaps, but I do it a little bit different with the flaps. And I show that in my other video. And then my next video, I'll show you how to do it with spoilers and, and some of the other fun stuff. I'll also show you how I set up this. Um, a lot of people may be wondering, you can now buy some of these Flight Deck Solution um, CDUs for rather inexpensively because they don't act like a um, joystick or they don't feed into the computer that way. But I'm going to show you how I was able to convert a CDU from Flight Deck Solutions to run in uh, Flight Sim 2020 and and control all of you know all the fun buttons and everything just like you would as if you had um, Flight Tech Solutions uh, running on FS2020, uh, running a CDU. But I was able to actually map all the buttons. And I'm gonna show you that in one of the next videos I do. 
and uh, and I think you're really going to enjoy that part. So that's it for today, guys. Um, give this video a thumbs up. Share it in the communities that you're um, involved with, Facebook groups, anything that you're involved with that has to do with building simulators. This is information that people are going to love because we show you another way to do it. Uh, especially in situations like this where it's extremely frustrating to figure out how a throttle can work when the software just doesn't read it traditionally like a joystick would. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up, comment below if you liked it. And if there's anything specific that you're struggling with that you would like me to show you on video how to solve, if I know how to do it, I'll be happy to make you a video on it and help you out.